we're going to start by reviewing the measurement of a segment. Now, let's get a little vocabulary first. So I'm looking at this segment right here. This is the segment AB, exercise number three in your textbook. And I know I can represent it several ways. When I write this, the capital letters, AB with the bar on the top, that stands for the segment or line segment AB. Now watch carefully when I add this to the expression, the lowercase m says the measurement of the line segment AB. So you'll see that in your textbook. But then you'll also see this, AB with no line over the top. Now what that means is simply the distance between the points A and B. Now being clever as you are, you've realized that there is a similarity, that these two expressions are going to be used synonymously, since the measurement of the segment is the distance between its endpoints. So you're going to see this expressed either like this or like this, when we're talking about the actual measurement. This expression we're going to use when we're referring to the segment itself, and you'll see that being used with congruence. More about that later. Let's just work on this exercise. Let's just pull up a straight edge. Now you all probably have seen a ruler before. I've made this one to scale to match our drawing and we can see the divisions. Uh, these, this one is metric. So these are centimeters and tenths of centimeters. If I were to line it up on the end here, I can read one, two, and I can see one more there, or one-tenth. So I could simply read that as two and one-tenth centimeter. Of course, I could write it that way. I can write it that way. I can also do this, especially, I mean, all your chemistry and your math or your science teachers tell you when if the end is messed up, your engineering class will tell you, why don't you just measure from here? from the one, and of course, then you would see, I can see I'm at 3.1, and I have to subtract the one, so I have, again, two and one-tenth centimeter. <laughs> I just say, why don't you just make a better straight edge? Um, but that's beside the point. Let's do the other exercises. We've got two more that look like this, and again, we'll go through them quickly. I'm seeing here, that looks like three, 0.2, so I could say 3.2 centimeters or 3 and 2 tenths, or again, if I line up this way, I'm seeing 4 and 2 tenths, and I would have to remember to subtract the 1. Okay, one more, we'll call it good. And right away, I can see on EF to scale, it looks like 3 and a half if you like fractions, but we in the decimal world will call that 5 tenths. I know you all like to say 0.5, same thing, but us old school people, we still talk in fractions. I move it here, and again, 4.5, and subtract the one, and then you're done. Now let's find some distances using a number line. Now, you've done this before, but we'll formalize it a little bit. As we said earlier, the two letters, JK, stands for the measure of the segment JK, or the distance between the two points. So let's write it this way. I could take the value, or the ordinate value, of J and subtract, <clears throat> subtract from it K. <clears throat> So I could have negative 6 minus 3. By definition, the distance is an absolute value. So simplifying that, the absolute value of negative 3 is, of course, 3. And what you're saying is, why didn't you take k and subtract j? Excellent idea. If I do that, again, the distance is an absolute value. I've got negative 3 minus negative 6. And I have a distance of 3. Either way, it's the same. Um, personally, I generally, if I'm using a number line, I'll take, in this case, the number on the right 
and subtract from it the number on the left, and then I'm always going to have a positive outcome, um, and that negates the need for that absolute value. But, um, but let's be formal here. Now, JM, we'll do it my way here, and we're going to take the value of M and subtract from it J. And you can see, or you can just intuitively say, six units to the right of the zero, six units to the left of the zero, and we all know that that is a distance of 12. And there you have it, the values for JK and JM. Well, here's an interesting exercise where we are given five collinear points and a couple segments. The overall distance, VZ, 52, and XZ is 20. Now we're given one more meaningful piece of information, and that is that these segments are divided equally. VX is equal to XY is equal to YZ. I'm going to express that in my drawing like this. I want you to do this too. Put in those little tick marks, which is going to tell us that those segments are congruent. Now it's pretty straightforward. If I've got 20, it's split into two tens. And since all three of these are the same, this one must also be 10. Well, that takes up 30. How much is left? 22. So it's straightforward arithmetic. And then you've just got to add the various segments accordingly, and you'll figure out how much each of those comes to. Segment addition posture. Now here's a classic algebra exercise making use of segment addition postulate. We'll take our time on this one because you're going to see this one on your chapter test and it's there's a lot of these in this section so let's just take our time and do one of them well. Um, we're given text description and we're given some values for the various segments. So let's first start by making a drawing. Do yourself a favor, make a drawing. I'm going to start by drawing the segment RT. My text tells me that S is between R and T, and it's on RT. A little redundant there, but I have this. S is on RT. Now I'm going to fix this drawing. I'm going to change this and put these expressions into the relevant parts of the segment. So let me rearrange it like this. And I'm going to draw that for you. Now I've got the benefit of color coding, it's just to make it easier on you to follow, but I can see that the red segment combined with the blue segment equals the green measurement, which is the segment RT. Right? Pretty good so far? Well, let's start working it out. I'll show the setup here. I, can, I know these two segments. This is the segment addition postulate. You're going to notice in magenta on the right hand side I'm going to write reasons. If you start doing it now it's going to help you because this is the basis for proofs. We're going to make a statement on the left and we're going to write a justification on the right. You're not required to do it now but it's a good idea to get used to it. Let's keep going. I'm going to make the substitution. And again I write down substitution. Let me justify what's going on here. Keep my equal signs lined up vertically. I've got the red expression plus the blue expression equals the green expression. And now, what do I do next? Well, let's combine some terms. I've got x's, x's, I've, and I've got some constants. I can simplify that. Now I can add both sides and then divide. If I've got Five x's are 35, each x is 7, and it looks like I'm done. And if you write down 7, like some of you do on your SATs, it's wrong because you didn't answer the question. The question says find rs and st. So we've solved for x, that's just one part. Let's do the substitution. So I'm going to clear this out of the way. Remember, x is 7. We've already solved for that. And on the left, I'm going to substitute into the red expression. And I've got two sevens minus eight, which is six. And then I'm going to go on the other expression. I've got three sevens minus 10, which is 11. And one quick little check, six 
plus 11 is 17, so it does work out. And even though I made my drawing like this, I can see the drawing should have been perhaps a little bit more like that. But I didn't know it at the time. So it doesn't really matter when you're making your drawing but you're, because you're just trying to get a picture of what's going on. But that may have been a better representation of 11 and 6. Now you're done. You're going to see this problem again.